So, hi. Uh, I'm going to start with a very short story about myself, which is, was an eye-opener to me. Uh, years ago, and I won't say how many years ago, because this will be considered ageism. Ageism is illegal now, so you won't know my age. So I took a decision, a life-changing decision. I think you guess what was the decision back then. And then I took a decision to change that decision. <laughs> and to tell you the truth, this was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'm not saying don't do it, but to me, this was the best thing. So this experience, this bad experience, was an eye-opener to me to realize something very important in my life now which I love to share with everyone. I've realized that I am my values. I've realized that I am not your values. And I've realized that you are not my values. And I've realized also that we are not our values. So how come? Confusing, huh? You'll see by the end. So I think all of us share these values, sympathy, inclusion, empathy, equality, empowerment, and the list goes on. But each of us actually behaves differently motivated by those, those values. That's what makes us unique. That's what makes us different. Because we all believe in love, but we react to love in a different way. A very simple example is that to some, love is an equivalent to being possessive. To some, Respect is equivalent to being fearful. So that's how, we different, that's how different we are. So I got to a time where I started thinking that it's about time to rethink our values, rethink where they came from, rethink how we acquired those values, because a lot of the group values especially that we passively inherit or we passively acquire, it's not only about inheriting, it's also about acquiring through life. Unfortunately, we acquired it in a very passive way. So this experience was a wake-up call for me to actually say to myself that it's about time to start exploring myself, to understand what were those values coming from. I mean, it was a life-changing decision that I took. So in this picture, you see that, um, what do you see? What do you see? You see pain, and you see Party, yes. So I come from a country in the Middle East, from Lebanon, which has over 18 different sects and religions. Can you imagine? 18 different sects and religions living in a 10,452, yes, I know the, uh, okay, still remember good, 10,452 kilometers square. And this was a reason for them, unfortunately, again, to have a lot of conflicts, to have a lot of wars internal, external, religious, sectarian, ethnic, you can call it. You just name it and we can make a war out of it. So, this picture was taken in 1975, and this picture is 2018. It's so inspiring to see how youth in Lebanon or in the Middle East area are so much resilient. They've witnessed a lot of wars, a lot of traumas, and they were able to come out of these traumas and have parties. Yes, we have beautiful parties in Lebanon. You have to visit, by the way. But I've noticed that res this resilience was not enough. They were trying to be resilience, resilient, but not in the right matter. And do you know why? Because resilience takes change. And change needs transformation. And transformation needs conversions. This is how you make a positive resilience out of your experience. Myself, I started as a flight attendant, and I shifted my career into becoming a communication academic. I don't know how this happened. I'm still trying to understand what happened to me. And as a youth activist, I wanted to I wanted to transfer everything that I have learned through my journey, and it wasn't an easy one, by the way, to everyone around me to help them understand that change is not about changing habits. It's not about changing daily habits. It's not about changing the way you look. 
changes up about understanding yourself and the ability to change, to do transformation and to do conversions. Because by this, you will be able to build new communities. But unfortunately, change is always scary. We're all afraid of change, right? Who's afraid of change? Yes. Yes. And transformation is, is misinterpreted because people do not understand what transformation means. And conversions is not way more accepted. So basically, change is scary. Transformation is misinterpreted. And conversions is misunderstood by people. They don't understand the difference between the three of these so that they can enter a new stage of life. So basically, our youth all over the world, they face the, um, the motivation or the feeling of getting pulled out into their community, into their group values, because they feel protected there. They feel that they share the same habits with them. So they are stuck in their comfort zone. They are stuck in their groups. They are stuck in their family. They are stuck in their sect or even their political party, which is unfortunately represented through religions and sects. So they have the urge to protect themselves of what they call the others. And it took me months and months and months to understand or to find a definition to this word. It always surprised me to hear it, like, why do you feel like you cannot change your thoughts, why you feel you cannot change your values, because we need to protect ourselves from others. So after searching and after having social experiments, some of it is really weird with my students, so I've noticed that the others is always whatever different from them. They were not able to find commonalities before finding differences. So basically, it's now time to shift our paradigm. It's now time to change the way we are thinking. It's now time to step out of our comfort zone and start thinking about a plan for the future. I know some of my talk might not be relevant to some of you, but I'm very sure there are a lot of commonalities at many places. I know a lot of uh, youth living in Europe, in, uh, in Europe face the same uh, cycle or vicious cycle of being stuck somewhere. They call it boxes somewhere. Some of them call it, um, I don't know, uh, paradigms. It has different names, but it, it has one bad habit of making people standing still and not being able to accept others. I don't want to get into political uh, things, but it's, only, it's, uh, it's sometimes about accepting others, accepting foreigners, accepting strangers. It's not written in the text, so I'm improvising. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I've been giving him hard times. <laughs> so, first of all, before doing anything, we need to acknowledge that it is a personal responsibility. So I've been talking about to youth, I've been talking about youth that we need to change. But we don't need anyone to start change. We just need ourselves. However, however, there are some resources that we could use to help us do that change. For example, education. Education is one of the most important things in our life. It's like bread. It's like having shelter. True? We all agree on that. But education is not only, and I hold responsibility for saying as an academic, education is not about acquiring grades or being judged by your grades. It should be about learning, about incubating youth to learn and to be able to apply what they learn in their daily life with their girlfriend, with their families, in their work, because everything we learn in life, it is transformed into a nice form of knowledge that we could use and change our life. And I'm saying that not only for youth, I'm saying that also for educators all over the world. You need to start educating yourself and you need to keep educating yourselves because youth have changed and you need to understand where the change is going to. And you need to learn how to give them that knowledge in a very sustainable way. 
they need to understand that knowledge is a never-ending journey. The other resources that we could use is civil society. And civil society is a salvation for youth. Salvation for youth to build their, the communities that they wish for themselves. But it's important to say that civil society should be a down-to-top approach. Like, it should be from the community to the community. And who's best than the youth to actually add their input into planning, into assessment, imp into implementation. This will make them a better citizens and will definitely make them better leaders. The third is the big problematic resource that we have is the media. And I've heard many of us, and still I will hear more, more people saying that the media has really messed up our life, it has uh, changed values, it has disrupted values for people. But come on, let's admit, media has a lot of useful resources. If media is not here, we won't be able to watch our TED Talks afterwards, right? So it's useful, but we're using it in the right way. So what's needed in this matter in media is paying attention to a very important type of literacy, which is media literacy. Media literacy now, I think it's a, it's a mainstream thing that many schools, many universities are using it. But it's very simple. It's only about having critical thinking. Critical thinking for one objective, to become responsible senders, responsible users, and responsible receivers. So that I'm able to analyze any type of information that I'm receiving and to formulate the right knowledge that I want to give to myself. And at the same time, I would be able to use that critical thinking and respect that responsibility to give the right information to others. Because now I think it's all a very messed up thing. Like everyone is a user, everybody is a sender, everybody is a vlogger, everybody is a writer. So that's good. Let's take use of that. The fourth resource is very um, basic, is very simple. It's only about having self-exploratory journeys. I mean, we take a lot of time to explore the world around us, to explore new countries, to explore uh, our country. You guys are still walking in Austria. Good luck for you. So, but we forgot and we tend to forget to explore ourselves. And I've been hearing the word meditation a lot from my fellow speakers, and I really loved it because it's about getting back and connecting to ourselves, to be able to disconnect whenever we wanted to. So I need to be aware of myself. I need to be aware of who am I? I need to get myself, I can't get out of this zone, but I need to get out of my comfort zone. I need to do something that is not something that I've been learned to do it. So basically, at the end, I will say that it's a personal responsibility for all of us, but we need to help youth in many other ways in addition to the resources and institutions that I've just mentioned. We need to let youth be aware of their insecurities. I'm a person who wasn't much aware of my insecurities. I was afraid to say that I have insecurities. I was, I was embraced in a way that you are a strong woman, you are uh, very ambitious, and you will do a lot of things, but my parents, my school, my college, they didn't realize that I've been having a lot of insecurities, a lot of doubts, and it's something very normal. But I wasn't taught how to face these fears. And by facing these fears, I mean by incubating them and understanding them. The second thing is shock people and shock youth with unfamiliarity. When we see something unfamiliar, we extend to a new level. And that's something that will help us grow. This will help us actually see commonalities before the contrast, to see the commonalities before the differences. Because we have learned in school, in college, in our daily life, if I meet someone here now in the room, I will look for the differences before I see the similarities. That's how I, our brain is um, engineered, it's managed. But actually, the good thing about the brain is that it's very stupid. 
Yes, it's very stupid, by the way. Because whatever you tell your brain, it will believe it. Really. Really. And that's what media is doing, by the way. So it's telling us a lot of stuff, and we are believing it. So that's what we can do to our brain for a good reason. And the fourth thing is having fun. Having fun is a great thing for learning. We should push youth or motivate them, depending on the type of youth that we have. We should allow them to have fun while learning. We should allow them to enjoy themselves while working, because life is so beautiful. And the more they are experiencing and having more exposures in life, the more human beings they become. And when I say human beings, because they see human, they don't see any more borders or nationalities or ethnicities or religions. So by the end, and as a woman, as a woman coming from a region that is so much um, engineered to follow group values, as a woman questioning these values and actually challenging these group values, I would like to uh, conclude to you and to tell you and remind you, because I know you already know that, that um, change is inevitable. It's inevitable. We cannot run away from change. We can't, and it's inevitable. Like if I put my hand here, I can't take it back. It happened. And the last thing that I want to tell you is that youth is irreversible. You can't take up back any of your years. Thank you so much. Thank you.